good morning a happy new year and a very sunny bright day warm welcome to all of you today we have with us v sri ram who is going to talk about the life and times of chitur v nagaya for some of those who do not know the history of this sabha it was nagaya who is one of the founders of tyaga brahmagana sabha so in that aspect we thought it fit to start the season with a talk by sri ram sri ram reads no introduction he is an author of 22 or 23 enake konjam seriya ipo theriyirudilla sir so 23 books he is a historian he is the secretary of music academy he is the editor of madras musings and a number of things and one of the most viewed youtuber so with all this introduction i request sri ram to get along with the lecture thank you very much thank you dc as always an uh, invite from dc is more like a command uh, our families go back for a very long time and uh, when dc said that you must speak this year also i said why don't we select the topic of chitur v nagaya because uh, you know he was after all the founder of the tyaga brahma gana sabha better known as bani mahal uh the presentation takes you through his life in uh, in a sense in a in a broad sense it talks about his multifarious accomplishments and uh, it would not have been possible had there not been people who have already documented his life very well chitur v nagaya a monograph by knt shastri brought out by the publications division of the of the uh, ministry of information and broadcasting in 2000 is a very excellent resource as far as his life is concerned i have also had the good fortune of uh, moving very closely with uh, v a k rangarao who is an authority on all matters concerning film and gramophone and uh, he had given me a lot of information over a long period of time which i had compiled without really knowing that one day i would be asked to do a presentation on the life of uh, chitur v nagaya randor guy has written extensively in several articles but perhaps the best compilation is looking back with randor guy starlight star bright published by amra and then we have a few other uh, resources that i will come to smaller minor resources not major or very important ones but knt shastri's biography of nagaya has really been my principal reference for putting together this presentation uh, i must also mention here ashish rajadyaksha uh, uh, the the encyclopedia of indian cinema uh, which again is an outstandingly good resource for going through and picking up small nuggets of information uh, nagaya has a statue to himself in tnagar just outside panagal park most people don't even know that the statue exists at that particular place and uh, last week when i needed a photograph of that statue for this presentation i sent my friend ramanujar maulana and he located the statue with some difficulty and then he was saying that even approaching the statue has become a major issue because the place has become a very popular urinal and uh, so the pedestal of the statue has several things listed about nagaya most people know of him only as an actor and that too of a typecast actor most people if you say chitur v nagaya they'll say elderly gentleman who coughs in much of the film who is battered by various uh, you know elements of fate and invariably dies a very tragic death in the movie who weeps right through the film so you remember nirupa roy in hindi films used to have a similar reputation but the point is that the statue says actor producer music director singer script writer patriot these are all the different facets of nagaya that are listed at the pedestal of the statue and that means he was much much more than what we got to see of him particularly in the later films of his lifetime so today i'll try to trace some of the important contributions of chitur nagaya 
and therefore we pay our respect to the founder of this particular organization, the Tyaga Brahma Gana Sabha. So Nagaya's life begins at a time when we were just not the state of Tamil Nadu, when Madras or Chennai was not the capital of just Tamil Nadu. Today, the capital city is located at the extreme north of the state itself. In fact, if you go a little to the north, you are in Andhra particularly. But at one time, before independence, it was in the map on the left, as you can see, it was, it was this entire curve starting from Orissa and coming down, right down to Kanyakumari with parts of Kerala, parts of Karnataka thrown in as well. And that was the Madras presidency. And Madras city was the capital of that vast presidency. In fact, if you took a compass and drew an arc with Madras as the center, you could span the entire, uh, from Orissa right down to Kanyakumari. So that was the size of the uh, province over which Madras was the capital. Therefore, it was not a unilingual city. It had the influence of multiple languages in it. There were people from Kerala, there were lots of people from Andhra, and there were people from Karnataka, and so it was a multilingual city. And therefore, it had a lot of cultural development in it. Nagaya himself was not born here. He was born in a place called Goganur near Repale in Andhra, in present-day Andhra, on March 8th, 1904, to Vuppula Dadiyam Ramalinga Sharma, and Venkata Lakshamba. This was the name of his uh, parents. And uh, incidentally, I asked uh, Navina, my Telugu scholar friend, as to what Vupula Dadiyam means. In fact, I did not even know how to pronounce it before I came to this, uh, before I put together this presentation. And she said there is really no particular meaning to this word. This is all the Inti Peru, the, you know, the house name which people took from various sources over a period of time. It is very interesting to see that in several places, even in Tamil, it is spelt as Vupula Dadiyam. And then in some in English, it says Vupula Jadiyam with a ZH also in certain locations. But the correct pronunciation appears to be Vupula Dadiyam. And uh, the father himself was working in a very small capacity. It was a very poor family. And when, Nag when Nagaya was very young, his grandmother comes to this village and decides to take him back with her so that she can take care of him to a certain extent. After some time, the parents resign, the father resigns his job and he himself moves over to Chittur to stay along with the grandmother and to take care of Nagaya. The father becomes a Harikatha artist of a very minor capacity. He was not a major discourser or any such thing. But in the event, he becomes Nagaya's first guru in music. And Nagaya witnesses his father performing various stories and gradually becomes very influenced by that. He also appears to have learnt music from a Chittur Pereya Pillai, of whom we have no idea what kind of a musician he was, what he had learnt. And very early in life, he becomes very influenced by theatre. At that time, one of the major Telugu uh, theatre companies, you know, in those days you had these Telugu troops, you also had Tamil troops, these were all drama companies. And uh, contrary to the theatre world of today, they ran it on very strict professional and commercial lines. Uh, I'm not saying that today's theatre world is unprofessional, but what I want to say is that today's theatre world is populated by amateurs. There is no way that you can earn income by running a drama company today. As to how and why that happened, that is not the scope of this presentation. But today, you cannot hope to sell tickets for a drama performance in Tamil and hope to make a living out of it in this city. In Madurai, still I am told that there are there is a tradition of uh, theatre companies. But in Andhra, the most famous of the theatre companies was the Surabhi Nataka Mandali, the Surabhi Nataka Company, which was founded in the 1880s. And they used to travel all around Andhra, what was, you know, what is present-day Andhra, and they would stage plays at various locations. And Nagaya was crazy about uh, these drama performances. He would attend, he would come back, he would memorize the uh, dialogues even as a young boy. 
And on one particular day, when the Prahlada Natakam, Prahlada Charitram was being staged, the boy who was supposed to act as Prahlada couldn't act. He was ill. And they needed a replacement. They didn't know where to find it. Somebody pushed this boy onto stage and that became his debut. He acted as Prahlada and he was noticed. But his parents were very unhappy with the fact that he had uh, taken to, uh, taken to theatre. And uh, they then in kind of influenced him and said that you will have to, uh, you know, begin focusing on your education and this is not the right way for you to go because we need you, we need you to grow up and we need you to earn money for taking care of the family. That is not something that's going to happen by your becoming an itinerant theatre artist, even if you become the, a top-ranking theatre artist. So don't even consider doing that and you need to get educated. So Nagaya goes through the motions of education, studies a teacher's training course and even becomes a teacher in Chittur. But during all this time, his mind is forever involved in drama and in music. And uh, he, he sings. And one day, there is an English officer who has come to Chittur and is staying in a guest house or some such thing. And from the place where he is staying, Nagaya hears some strange music. First time he is hearing Western classical music, Western music of any kind. So he begins haunting the gate of that bungalow. The Englishman notices him, invites him inside after a few days. And there is a certain friendship that begins growing between Nagaya and the Englishman. And one day there is a visitor and that man is also very interested in music. The Englishman tells him, why don't you marry your daughter to this Nagaya? So I think those were very <laughs> fluid days when you look at it. And Nagaya gets married. And uh, thereafter, he is still working as that teacher in this particular school. But then the career has not, you know, in the sense that they are still suffering from great want of uh, money. And eventually, the wife dies after giving birth to a baby. The baby also dies after some time. So that is the end of his first wife. So Nagaya's life itself is full of a lot of, uh, you know, departures deprivations, you know, the deaths of several people that come into his life. A life of huge tragedy in various ways. Thereafter, after he, he joins a drama company called the Saraswati Vilasa Gana Sabha. He is acting for them. He then gives up his uh, job for some time. And then eventually he decides that if at all he needs to be successful in theatre, he needs to migrate to Madras city. And so he comes here. At that time, the major theatre organisation was the Suguna Vilasa Sabha, run by Pamal Samanda Mudaliar and his troop. And uh, they used to uh, operate from the Victoria Public Hall. This photograph that you see over here is of the VP Hall, taken in 1920. So Nagaya must have been only 12 at that time and he has not yet come to Victoria Public Hall. He comes here only in 1930. But this is a photograph that predates his arrival. And this is where the Suguna Vilasa Sabha would stage its place. When they were not staging their plays over here, you had the Chennapuri Andhra Mahasabha, which was a Telugu equivalent, a social organization that used to also stage its plays at this very same location. So Nagaya gets noticed first by the Chennapuri Andhra Mahasabha. He begins to act in plays like Sarangadhara and Naladamayanti. Uh, there are some stories about him got getting on to stage, forgetting his dialogues and mouthing something else and being cheered hugely by the audience because they were very tickled that somebody had actually forgotten his dialogues and was saying something else. The meaning of which was something else also entirely. And finally, he gets booed off stage. But despite all that, he stays on. And eventually, he becomes an artist of the Chennapuri Andhra Mahasabha. The Suguna Vilasa Sabha also notices him and therefore, he gets involved with the, that Sabha also. Now, at that time, the SVS had a lot of lawyers many of whom were also involved in the freedom struggle. And he comes under the influence of Sriman Srinivasa Iyengar, the father of Ambu Jamal. And together with him, he attends the Haripura Congress session. He participates in a small capacity in the uh, freedom struggle and all that. At this time, while he is acting over here and he is earning a little bit of money, he gets married for a second time to a girl called Girija, who is very knowledgeable in music. 
and he leaves Girija behind with his parents in Chittur and returns to Madras where he continues his acting career and is involved with all this. Suddenly, Girija dies of smallpox. And the father, Ramalinga Sharma, who was so uh, devout and who was a Harikatha artist himself, in his old age, in that six months that Girija was married to Nagaya, he had become very dependent on her singing for him the prayers every day in the morning. And he goes demented, the, the shock of the daughter-in-law dying. And on the 10th day of Girija's death, Ramalinga Sharma also dies. Nagaya is so sorrow-stricken by what happens that he goes to Ramanashrama. And he begins to spend time over there in deep meditation and wanting to overcome his sorrow. At that time, a visitor comes to, uh, to, Ramak Ra to, the, to the Ramanashrama in Thiruvannamalai and tells him that, you know, this is not going to help in any way because your family situation is so dire. Your mother is practically on the streets in uh, Chittur. You need to get back. You have to start earning and you have to begin looking at what you can do in order to take care of your family. And therefore, Nagaya comes back to Madras and he gets a job in a recording company. So this is the Hutchins Recording Company at that time recorded under license by the Gramophone Company of India. So the studio itself must have been just off Mount Road and Nagaya becomes a recording artist for the Hutchins Gramophone Company. This is sometime early in the 1930s. And uh, at that time, several artists are actually coming to record to, for, the, for the Hutchins record for the Gramophone Company of India and all that. And Nagaya gets to know a lot of musicians at this point of time. He also begins to fine-tune his own knowledge of music. They say that he learnt music from Maharajapuram Vishwanath Iyer at this stage. We don't know because this is not mentioned in any formal account of Maharajapuram Vishwanath Iyer's life that Nagaya learnt music from him. But perhaps he did. We don't know about that. But what we also note is that this is the first time that Nagaya is getting involved with orchestration. Because recording is just not somebody sitting down and singing. You needed to sometimes fill in the recording with orchestral interludes. So he began to realize what was the positioning of various instruments and things like that. Let us hear a very early recording of Nagaya singing Tyagaraja's Nalina Kanti Kriti. The orchestration is by him. The, uh, the recording itself very clearly shows you the influence of theatre because the powerful harmonium that you can hear, the emphasis on flat notes and not much of gamaka that is there, 
all of this you can make out from from this particular recording and that is how nagaya really evolves in music you will find that this is 30 1930 1931 by 46 i'll show you as we come later to what extent he actually evolves as a musician so this was a man who was clearly learning and growing learning and growing on a continuous basis in if he had not come to madras city all of this would not have happened because as i said the theater movement you had a very upmarket theater group over here like the suguna vilasa sabha so he had made his contacts with senior people similarly you had the gramophone company over here it had its studios over here so he was able to get employment and therefore he was sending money back to his village his mother was taken care of and he was evolving and at the same time under sriman srinivas ayengar he was informed that you know you need to graduate it's fine that you got a diploma as a teacher in the teachers training school and all that but you really need to graduate you don't need to formally join the university you can sit as an external candidate and finally nagaya becomes a bachelor of arts but he does not go and attend the convocation because he says that he would not want to go into a university whose vice chancellor is an englishman and whose chief guest is an englishman as a mark of protest he stays away from the convocation and then receives his degree uh, separately by post but he becomes chitur v nagaya ba thereafter which was a rare qualification for that point of time in 1931 as we all know sound comes to cinema for the first time and we have alamara in hindi and thereafter we have mahakavi kalidas uh, produced in as a bilingual in tamil and in telugu the story given is that the producer did not want to take any risks he knew that the camera could record hindi but he didn't know if it would record tamil and therefore they decided to play it safe and have two languages in the same movie tamil and telugu at least if one fails the other one will take care of it but at this time hm reddy the mustachioed man on this side he starts his company called shri ne- shri renuka films and nagaya has been trying his level best to get into movies ever since the you know sound comes into it he is repeatedly frustrated sometime in 1937 hm reddy is announcing his new film called griha lakshmi and nagaya is as one of the aspirants is waiting in hm reddy's office when who should come in but bommi reddy narasimulu reddy that is bn reddy bn reddy was a chartered accountant and he was a member of the chennapuri andhra mahasabha and he knew nagaya very well and when he goes into for that meeting he sees nagaya waiting and he says what are you doing over here nagaya says i have come i have been trying to get into films and i really need a job and he goes inside and he tells hm reddy that this boy needs to get a role in this particular film now hm reddy has already finalized the cast the main heroine is going to be uh, kannamba and there are several others the vamp is ashwathamma uh, kanchana mala and so on so there are other characters who have already been filled in there is only the the role of the brother of the heroine the man who runs a home for destitute people and a gandhian who takes care of fallen women and all that so that particular role is given to nagaya to perform and griha lakshmi comes out in 1938 and is considered to be a great success nagaya is noticed for the uh, first time in this particular movie of course kannamba really steals the show as the uh, main character in the film and uh, i am told i have not seen this film and i am only read from randor guy that there is a particular scene where the heroine is practically demented and runs down what is today's nsc bose road and paris corner in the midst of traffic and uh, Nag- uh, randor guy says that it was one of the most powerful uh, situations portrayed in a film at that point of time and when she ran down the streets the traffic actually came to a halt not because they recognized her i mean she was nobody at that point of time but they thought that there was a genuinely demented woman running down the street the police came and arrested her and took her to the flower bazaar police station and finally hm reddy and bn reddy had to go there and bail her out by telling the police that this is only a film situation this is not a real life uh, scenario so that was the power of uh, you know kannamba's acting in the movie but nagaya himself was noticed you see nagaya on that side 
and the woman in the middle is Kanchana Mala who plays the role of the evil vamp and I forget the name of the star on the other side. Then the next film that is also, but once the film is released, when uh, Griha Lakshmi is released, it's so successful that immediately H.M. Reddy and B.N. Reddy fall out with each other. This is very typical of anything Indian. When the Tyagaraja Aradhana, when it became very successful, the two brothers fell off and became Periyakachi and Chinakachi and still we are living after 108 years or 118 years with the legacy of that fight of how they abused each other in postcards so that everybody from the postman can read what is happening. So that is exactly how it is. So H.M. Reddy and B.N. Reddy fell out with each other and B.N. Reddy promoted what is called Vahini Pictures. Later on, with his brother Nagi Reddy, it would become Vijaya and Vahini, but at this point of time, it was called Vahini Pictures. And they made a film which was Vande Mataram. Now, the story itself is very interesting. When you hear the name Vande Mataram, you will immediately assume that this is the story of freedom, patriotic struggle and things like that. But in the film, Vande Mataram is the name of a horse on which the hero bets and makes a lot of money. And Nagaya is the <laughs> central character in the film and he acts with Kanchanamala in this movie. Nagaya also sets the music for this particular film. So while in the first film he only acted, here he is also the music director for the, for the, for the film. And uh, the censors of course were not at all amused. Remember this is 1940, this is not today's censors. They did not like the title Vande Matram, first of all, because they thought that it was a patriotic uh, film. And therefore, the film when released was Vande Matram Alladu Mangala Sutram. So, it had another title given to it. And there is also a situation in this film where the hero, because he doesn't... I, by the way, the whole film is available on YouTube. And I fast forwarded the film and I saw much of it. And uh, there is uh, one situation where the hero, because he is without a job, he throws down his university degree and stamps on it. Uh, something that all of us have wanted to do at various times in our lives. But, you know, we, uh, <laughs> we now, fortunately it wasn't recorded in film when it happened. So the censors objected to that as well. But the film was very, very successful with Nagaya as the hero. Uh, Nagaya is uh, the first time that we are seeing him act and as a young man. He's a trite effeminate in this film, from what I could make out, his, the way he recites his dialogues. Uh, he, he, he evolves from being a very soft-spoken, uh, dominated upon person to a person who has his own views, but very early because in the film he objects to taking dowry for his marriage and uh, incurs the wrath of his mother who then takes it out on his wife, etc., etc. But this particular song that I selected was because it shows Nagaya's, uh, you know, all-encompassing influence or the, the, the various influences that came to him when it came to setting music. This is directly inspired by Rabindra Sangeet. And you can make out that Kanchanamala herself is not a very great singer. So what he does is he gives her the lower portions and whenever the high pitches are required, he jumps in and then he begins singing and the impact of both of them singing together is very powerful. Janaki Malati Divana Shobha Janaki Malati Divana Shobha Rama Madhu Radhu Pali the Janaki Malati Jeevan Ashoba Na 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 That whole thing is Rabindra Sangeet Na 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 That entirely taken from a Tagore piece I tried to search, I tried to remember what it was but I couldn't and someday I'm sure it will come back to me as to what that particular song is but he had completely taken it from that particular film now, Nagaya acted as a hero. 
suddenly all of us as i said remember him only as an elderly man unfortunately for him right at this time when this particular movie this bande mataram alayas mangala sutram became a major hit vahini studios produced their next film which was called sumangali and it's a film about widow remarriage and in that bn reddy decided to cast nagaya as an elderly man see he was born in 1904 this was 1940 41 so he was only around 35 at that time when he was going to act as a very elderly person with a wig and a you know gray wig and a mustache and he had to adopt a elderly gait in the film he was not very happy about it but remember in those days the studio bosses were the absolute bosses this was the height of the studio system at one time i mean you had vasan you had meyappan and then you had nagi i mean you had b n reddy and later nagi reddy you didn't go against what the studio bosses told you because you are a studio staffer you are employed by the studio itself and therefore with some reluctance he he takes this role and he models his acting entirely on the freedom fighter kandukuri veere not freedom fighter the social reformer kandukuri veere selingam pantulu and uh, he models himself completely on that the way he dresses the way he looks the way he acts and he gets very noticed in this particular film as an elderly man this unfortunately is going to begin become the beginning of a type cast for a very long period of time now all of this is telugu cinema at this time he also gets noticed in tamil the same year as sumangali is being is on the floors he is now outside of vahini he is acting for a film starring mk tyagaraj bhagavadar and kannamba and the film is called ashok kumar and he acts as the emperor ashoka and tyagaraj bhagavadar acts as his son and kannamba acts as trishya rakshitai who is the wife of the emperor ashoka but who has who falls in love with one of the sons of ashoka so she is a wife i mean she is a concubine or a co-wife so to speak and so she uh, lusts I, i shouldn't say falls in love she lusts after one of the sons of ashoka and all the complications that come about because of that and there as you can see very majestic nagaya was very tall after all and he begins to be noticed from this particular film onwards as a actor in tamil and thereafter he begins regularly acting in tamil films eventually when the final tally is done i think there were probably around 200 and odd tamil films in which nagaya had acted so for a person who was completely born and brought up in andhra it was a great accomplishment uh, what he was able to do in the 1930s as i said he was also a freedom fighter and uh, in uh, at this time we had this remarkable personality in uh, madras presidency called ak chettiar ak chettiar was a journalist he was a man who had traveled widely he had trained in cinema and in the 1930s ak chettiar wanted to make a film on mahatma gandhi remember gandhi was alive at that time so ak chettiar traveled extensively to wherever gandhi was he sourced footage and finally in the face of great difficulty he made a film on gandhi and it was they say that it was actually seen by gandhi uh, himself the film was made in tamil it was then dubbed in telugu and it was also dubbed in hindi finally in 1953 it would be released in english in the united states of america ironically that english version is the only version that has been retraced and which is now available the tamil telugu and the hindi versions have all vanished A.K. Chettiar wrote a wonderful book, which is Annal Adichuvattil, which talks about how he made this particular film. In that, of course, he talks very highly about D.K. Patamal, because Patamal sang the songs in the Tamil version, and uh, he she refused to take money. And uh, he ends. Uh, it is what what is wonderful about this book is he talks about people who worked with him. He talks about people who worked against him. also people who kind of dissuaded him raja ji refused to give even 1 rupee every reference ends with walhani amman whether it is patamal who sang without taking money or raja ji who refused to give money or ss vasan who actively tried to prevent the film from being released etc etc every reference ends with walhani amman let us see what he has to talk about nagaya தெலுங்கு படத்தில் இந்த ராட்டை சுற்றும் காட்சிகளுக்கு 
பாடவே ராட்டினமாம் என்ற தெலுங்கு பாடலை பாடியவர் குமாரி சூரியகுமாரி இவர் சென்னை மாகாணத்தின் முதல் மந்திரியாக இருந்த ஆந்திர கேசரி டி பிரகாசம் அவர்களின் சகோதரர் புதல்வி தமிழ் தெலுங்கு படங்களில் தொடக்கத்தில் டைட்டில்கள் வரும்போது வந்தே மாத்தரம் பாட்டை சேர்ந்து பாடியவர்கள் சித்தூர் வி நாகையாவும் பேஸ்வாடா குமாரி ராஜரத்னமும் ஆவர் மிக அருமையாக பாடினர் சித்தூர் வி நாகையா சிறந்த நடிகர் அது மட்டுமன்று சிறந்த மனிதர் சிறந்த நடிகர்கள் வாழ்க்கையில் சிறந்த மனிதர்களாகவும் திகழ்வது மிக மிக அரிது நாகையா இதற்கு ஒரு விதிவிலக்கு வாழ்க நீ எம்மான் so this is what he talks about nagaya in this particular so this is a shot from that particular film of gandhi you know holding a small baby so that's why i put it in around this time when he is very busy he is setting songs he is acting in films he also acts for the next film of vahini which is a film called devata and it has uh, 1941 it has shades of negative nagaya is a graduate he seduces his maid servant and impregnates her in the film and while this film is being made and it is being released in a strange situation of life imitating art the same thing happens in nagaya's home nagaya there is a girl from andhra who has come to study in madras her name is jayalakshmi and she is staying in nagaya's house one day nagaya marries her and he is very frank about what happened at that point of time and he under the biographer is very very sensitive he says under very peculiar circumstances in a situation where art and life went together nagaya married jay lakshmi as his third wife they would not have any children but she did not meet with the fate of the other two wives and she lived long and she was his companion for the rest of his life now repeatedly you know these offers of these old men were coming and he was not very happy with it he made his own film and that was called bhagya lakshmi this is just a photograph that i have put from that film where he plays the hero a good samaritan and a hero i wouldn't say hero he was more the central character of the film nagaya was not the kind of man who would get into action roles and things like that but he was the central character in this film and it was very successful as a tribute to hm reddy who gave his first break he called his film company as sri renuka films because that was called sri renuka pictures if you remember this was called sri renuka films and they made bhagya lakshmi it was a big success but he decided that he would continue with vahini at this time in the 1940s the saint pictures was a big genre of film making you had it in hindi you had it in tamil you had it in telugu these bhakta all the titles will be prefaced by bhakta bhakta nandanar bhakta gora kumbar and you know bhakta tukaram or sant tukaram so the saint mythologicals were a big thing they were getting a, earning a lot of money and nagaya for the first time was cast as bhakta potana by vahini studios in 1941 potana was a saint in the andhra tradition in the 14th 15th century he is the man who first wrote the bhagavatam in telugu and uh, nagaya again very reluctant to act as the old man but once again dominated upon by the studio system so they got him to shave his head they got him to put the namam they put on all the clothes on him and then when they saw him the camera man went running out brought a coconut and broke it at the feet of nagaya and said this is potana potana has come to life we don't need anything further than this and therefore nagaya acts in that particular film and it must have been very interesting for him because several years earlier when sg kitappa had come to chittur and had sung nagaya had taken a coconut and broken it at kitappa's feet saying that in the mari paatala you know we could have never heard it anywhere else so the same thing was happening to him once again in this particular film where he was acting and they broke the coconut and he became potana the film itself has lots of songs and uh, what is very interesting is that there is even a tyagaraja kriti in uh, sung in potana's time and <laughs> you know 3 400 years before tyagaraja but then those were days when you know in prahlada charitram you know they would be singing tyagaraja kirtanes so they would even sing english songs in tyagaraja kirtanes so you know all kinds of things would happen on stage so in potana also there are situations like that but i have selected another song for you to listen to 
ಪಾವನ ಗುಣ ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ಪಾವನ ಗುಣ ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ಪಾವನ ಗುಣ ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ಪರಮದಯ ನಿಲಯ ಹರಿ ಪರಮದಯ ನಿಲಯ ಹರಿ ಪಾವನ ಗುಣ ರಾಮ ಹರಿ So thereafter, because he is noticed as Bhakta Potana, he acts in Gemini, Gemini Studios, uh, 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 what is that film? He, uh, he acts as Gora Kumbar in a particular film, which I've forgotten. Then he acts in a number of saint roles thereafter and he becomes very closely associated with that genre as well. So this film, which he acts as, I'm sorry about, ah, Chakradhari, as Gora Kumbar, he acts in that. Then Bhakta Jana, and then finally in 1947 he acts in yogi vemana as well so this is in chakradhari chakradhari and then this is in uh, bhakta jana and this is yogi vemana so all of them are this saint genre films and he is very much noticed but in 1945 while all these saint genre films are being made nagaya being nagaya acts in a very different role which is in a film called swarga seema Swarga Seema sees Bhanumati in her first major role as a vamp. And it is a story of a very respectable professor, happily married to a woman with children. And the neighbor is this vamp who comes into their lives and how she creates chaos and havoc in their life. And finally, you know everything, all good triumphs at the end, after the vamp has had all her fun. In my opinion, the vamps always had all the fun in every film in Hindi and Tamil and Telugu. The heroine cried right through the movie. Then finally, you know, when the film was ending, everybody, <laughs> the hero reunited with his wife. So this is how these films are made. Nagaya set the music for this movie. And uh, you saw him taking from Ravindra Sangeet. You saw him taking from Thyagaraja. So let's see how he is creating a wonderful, happy tune for a cycling song. Now, cycle, remember, the, this was 1945-46, the war was just coming to an end. Petrol was in great rationing. And cycles were encouraged everywhere across the country. People had to cycle. And so, the song comes at a very timely moment. It shows a very happy family cycling and singing together. So, let us see this particular song. Chalo Chalo Cycle, that's the tune. Chalo Chalo Cycle, the woman who's singing is Jayamma, who plays the role as, of his wife. A fantastic singer. You can see that uh, soprano which she gives in the beginning. And she later on would act with Nagaya and Thyagaya also, which was his magnum opus. She plays the role of Thyagaraja's wife in that particular movie. Now, this is a very happy uh, scene where, you know, the family is all together. And now we have the Patra Pravesham of the vamp. Just see the way they create this drama around Bhanumati. 
the way she enters as the vamp and then the symbolism of the vamp itself as an evil woman uh, just see the way this is done again with just the music and of course banumati's uh, stunning presence in the screen You can see that the character is in st strong shadows and then when she stands by the window there is a spider's web behind her to indicate that you know she is slowly she is the spider that's going to ensnare the hero into her trap and the bird is not able to fly it is caught tightly in her clutches and every 2 seconds she makes a move as though she is going to release it and then she catches it back releases it catches it back and finally when she releases it you realize that it's a flightless bird it can only walk it's not uh, flying and then she'll jump again in the next situation and catch it once again i'm told that that entire effect of that oh ho oh, oh, ho that was created by a cone that was placed on top of banumati's head as it as it moved around i believe that peculiar sound effect was created in order to bring about that you know that sense of evil that uh, manifests itself now in 45 with swarga seema becoming a very big hit nagaya suddenly chooses to play second fiddle to ms subalakshmi of all people in meera he becomes the maharana of mewar in this particular movie lots of people were thought of including g n balasubramaniam surprisingly and not very surprisingly mr sadashiva must have rejected that particular name and said no no we don't want it but they finally got in uh, they finally zeroed in on uh, nagaya to play the role of the maharana the same film later on you know it would be dubbed in hindi as well and then he would reprise the same role in it there is one duet that he sings with ms subalakshmi you remember that when we heard him sing with kanchana mala he sings he takes on the higher pitches because he is the stronger voice now just see how he sacrifices himself when subalakshmi is the naturally subalakshmi is the more powerful voice and just see how this duet pans out in this film minnum mannum nedaindavum kannal vigraham ondril adanginano minnum mannum nedaindavum kannal vigraham ondril adanginano ponnil maniyil kaniyil malaril ponnil maniyil kaniyil malaril iyarkai aagil nilangano iyarkai aagil ஒன்னு மணியும் கனியும் மலரும் கண்ணனரும் வெள்ளத்தி வலைய கண்ணனரும் வெள்ளத்தி வலைய இந்த தெய்வீக 
தெய்வீக அன்பினாலே இந்த தெய்வீக அன்பினாலே எந்த நேயம் மறந்தாய் போலும் In the Hindi version, this is घन श्याम आया री हमारे घर श्याम आया री दैट इज द सॉन्ग दैट एंड इन दैट यू कैन मेक इट आउट इवन फर्दर नागे आर सिंग्स जस्ट वन और टू लाइन्स इन इट एंड मच ऑफ द सॉन्ग इज एक्चुअली टेकन केयर ऑफ बाय एम एस सुबलक्ष्मी इन दी हायर पिक्चर्स वाइल इन दिस सिचुएशन ही एम्बार्क्स ऑन पहाप्स वॉट इज दिस फाइनेस्ट फिल्म विच इज नागैया त्यागैया द लाइफ ऑफ त्यागराजा इन नाइनटीन फोर्टी makes it under his own banner perhaps he was so carried away by that saint genres in which he was acting that he really saw himself in that particular role he presses a whole lot of musicians into advisory capacity and leading the list is the redoubtable bengalur nagaratnamma who is already living in tiruvayar at that time having built the tyagaraja samadhi and is taking care of it and uh, under their guidance he creates the story he writes the script himself even today it is one of the most watchable period films because of nagaya's acting which is so underplayed there is no melodrama in the whole thing he plays a very normal tyagaraja going around singing songs being happy and jayamma a phenomenal uh, companion to him in this uh, particular film and the songs have all been given a very light cinematic touch in order to keep the interests of the film going but by and large they stick to the very strong classical they have been shot entirely on location so you the almost the whole film is in tiruvayar so you get a very good idea of the pushya mandapa padithure tyagaraja's house which today doesn't exist remember that after all today you know we have what is a most ugly monument for tyagaraja built in place of what was a most beautiful house that was located over there then it is shot in location at kanchipuram in srirangam in other place in tirupati of course but more shown as a you know by way of distance and all that but the film itself is entirely watchable for, because of the wonderful way in which the music has been set and the way he remains very faithful to the harikatha tradition of tyagaraja's life so you know as a modern writer i may or may not agree with much of the interpretation that happens in it but it remains a very stunningly beautiful tribute to tyagaraja so i have uh, you know sometimes there is presenters bias so in all the songs that are there in it i decided i will play once again my favorite which is yenaga manasu kurani sung by as a duet between tyagaraja and his wife in this particular film and i always have a soft corner for jayamma so i wanted to have her in a singing situation so i have to put that song over here for you yenaka manasu kurani yenaka manasu kurani panaga shai sobesu panuga kanuga nani kanule le kanule le kanti me 
I don't know how many of you noticed that when the Tyagaraja Mudra comes, the wife stops singing and only he sings. Such sensitivity and such small attentions to detail, the whole film is full of this. You know, he, he just elevates himself to the role of uh, Tyagaraja. Certainly after seeing that, any modern interpretation will fall flat because this is Tyagaraja for uh, most of us. Just at the time when Tyagaya is being made and his life and his mind is full, it's a big hit. It's one of the biggest successes of that decade. It brings him a lot of money, none of which he incidentally saves or puts aside. That is his problem in life. And more on that as to how he dissipated his wealth in a short while from now. But in the 40, in 45, 46, when Tyagaya is being made, in 44 actually, just as the work on Tyagaya is starting, Nagaya attends a concert in Mailapur and is coming back to Bazlulla Road where his house is in Tinagar by car and it is raining and he sees a group of people huddling in a bus shelter and he stops and asks them as to where they are going. This was the man, you know, he was so kind-hearted that, you know, who would bother about people standing in a bus shelter? But he decided to stop, it was late in the night and he asked them as to where they were going and they said, we are going to Tinagar. Bus services are very regular right now and there are no sabhas over there. We came to listen to music in Mailapur because we wanted to, you know, attend somebody's concert. Now, Nagaya being Nagaya, he makes three journeys and drops all of them to their respective homes that night by car. And then, next day in the morning, he decides that a sabha should be created in Tinagar. He gets together three or four of his friends, Dr. V. Ramayengar, and then uh, a couple of others, Ramaswami Naidu, Saundar Rajayengar and others. And together they form what is called the Sri Tyaga Brahma Gana Sabha, which is where we are all seated today. And the look at the foresight of this group of people, including Nagaya, which is quite amazing because in his personal life, he would not display that kind of foresight. But within the next year, they had bought this property. In the, the, the property, had actually, initially they were functioning from the Dakshin Bharatiya Hindi Prachar Sabha. And then in 45, the family of Ramayengar or uh, was it, no, it was T.A. Uh, Padmanabhan, I think. Their family, I think, which gave the land initially on lease. And later on, the Sabha acquires the property itself. And today, if at all there is a Vani Mahal over here, it is thanks to people like Nagaya. In 45, Sir C.P. Ramaswamy Iyer inaugurates this auditorium. There is a concert by Ariyakudi Ramanu Jayengar. And in this particular photograph, you can see Nagaya seated in the front row, attending a performance much later in life. And therefore, the Tyaga Brahma Gana Sabha comes into existence and it, is, it remains today one of his greatest contributions to Madras city. Uh, breaking away from the saint films, he makes a very, very path-breaking film which is Bidala Patlu, Yere Padum Padu, which is based on La Miserable uh, in French. And he plays the uh, central character of Jean Valjean in this particular movie, the story of a man who is forced into wrongdoing, then reforms himself and sets right a number of things in life. And this film particularly, it gives rise to the character Jawert which is the name of the inspector and Sita Raman who would play it would become Javar Sita Raman for the rest of his life because of the role that he played in this particular movie. But this genre, in, 1950, in the 1950s, this particular film is made. Nagaya sets the music for this particular film himself and there are some lovely songs in the movie. There is one song that I wanted to particularly play for you which shows Nagaya playing with a small child and singing songs about toys. The Telugu version is much better than the Tamil version, but the I couldn't find the Telugu version in time, so I have placed the Tamil version here. But I cannot fault his Tamil in any way, but I'm only saying that as a song, lyrically, it sounds much better in Telugu, because I clearly, the lyric was clearly written first in Telugu, the tune was created, and then they force-fit the Tamil uh, lines to suit the same tune. You can make that out. Bum, chika, 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 bum, chika, bum. Bum chicka 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 bum chicka bum. Wa 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 body wa ye na shi pa pa shingar pa pa shinanjir kalamudai wa. Ye na shi pa pa shingar pa pa shinanjir kalamudai wa. Man bol tulli wo dadi wa. Gen madika ne. 
புன்னகைவதனம் வெண்மதி தானே புன்னகைவதனம் வேண்டுழலாதும் முன்மழலை செல்லும் அடையவே வர்ணம் தீட்டிய பொம்மைகள் பாரு கிளி இதுவே கப்பல் இதுவே கிளி கிளி பார்த்தாயா குறைஞ்சு வினோதமான உருவம் இது வா 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 போடி வா என்னாசி பாப்பா சிங்கார பாப்பா சின்ன சிறு தள்ள முதை வா மாந்தோல் துள்ளி ஓடோடி வா at this time there is this film called thai ullam which is made which is based on the english novel eastland which is a tear jerker about a woman who goes astray leaving behind her husband several years later comes back as a nurse maid to the children of the same family etc etc horrible novel uh, i've had the misfortune of reading it and it scars you for the rest of your life including the last scene unforgettable but anyway the film was clearly made based on that thai ullam is the name of the film and nagaya plays the role of the wronged husband we don't have a unfortunately there is no reel of the film left but you will all recognize this particular song vasanth kumari the main tune is taken from thandi hawaye which is very clear from naujawan the film uh, starring nalini jayawant and with lata mangeshkar but this na 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 that particular portion is taken from the theme of delilah in the film samson and delilah and nagaya has merged these two together in order to create such a wonderful composition he was the music director for this particular film and it is very clear that there are lots of vasant kumari hits under his baton so probably he really admired her versatility in music and he used her very frequently in several of his uh, films in 1952 he announces the beginning of a film called bhakta ramadasu he also at this time nagaya is charging 1 lakh for every film this is in the 1940s and uh, he acquires 52 acres or 52 grounds or some such thing of land in kodambakkam where he wants to start a studio at the same time he announces the bhakta ramadasu film as well b n reddy is aghast he goes and meets him and he tries to tell him that look you don't have the understanding or the financial capability to run a studio you can't do it but nagaya because of the you know great days that he is in and because of the income that he is making he believes that uh, you know he can uh, get the films going and he can get the studio going unfortunately the studio fails and you know he is financially crippled partially because of that even that he could have made good but ramadasu takes 8 years in the making by the time it is released in the 1960s an entire world has gone by films of that kind are no longer in vogue parashakti has come action films the same genre is completely dead and uh, the heavy flowing dialogues in telugu or tamil none of it was towards the end nt ramarao and shivaji who play rama and lakshmana in the film and anjali devi they all acted free for the movie because of the respect that they had for nagaya and when the final shot was over shivaji fell at nagaya's feet and said appa na poit vare 
because that was the respect that he had that he held nagaya and nagaya of course had acted as his father in several films but when the film was released it made money it was not as though it was a flop it ran for 100 days in some centers and all that but the kind of investment that nagaya had pushed into the film the kind of agreements that he had got into the borrowings that he had made none of it was going to be paid back as far as the film was as you know as far as his finances were concerned and thereafter it was a steady downhill path as far you know as far as as his life went he had to accept more and more and more roles in order to keep the home fires burning and in order to pay for the interest and pay for the loans that he had taken unfortunately this was not the kind of man who ever believed in uh, you know saving for a rainy day i told you about this uh, tyagaya and the kind of money that he made in it in that film there is a scene where 200 brahmins come to tyagaraja's house for participating in a santarpana tyagaraja is giving them all money nagaya you know in any other man vasan for instance or avi meyappan would have got some 200 extras to come and <laughs> act as those brahmins and would have paid them one idli one vadai and maybe 20 rupees and sent them all off nagaya got genuine brahmins <laughs> from all villages put them up in madras for weeks on end in his house and in the film company offices and finally when they went back he paid them dakshina that kept them without earning for the next 6 months this was the way he had spent his money and then when people came to him to ask for money he would think nothing of going and borrowing from a money lender to give them the money they would not return it the onus would be on him to repay the loan in 1953 when the linguistic division of states happened and prakasam pantulu was going to become the t prakasam tanguturi prakasam was going to become the first chief minister of andhra he needed money very urgently nagaya went and borrowed 20000 rupees on his surety and handed it over handed it over to prakasam this was the kind of personality that he was even as a father he did have some very memorable roles one of them was edir paradad with shivaji ganeshan and padmini a phenomenal nuanced performance as the elderly man who out of circumstances beyond his control ends up marrying the beloved of his son so that is the edir paradad in the film lovely music of course uh, shridhar's direction but nagaya's acting is a class apart with shivaji and padmini in the film he manages to keep his scenes entirely to himself and he is totally noticed the other film which i really liked and uh, i think we have 10 minutes so i'll finish by that time is sampurna ramayanam where he plays the daughtering dasharatha and uh, his uh, the what i enjoy the most about sampurna ramayanam it's a very heavy film and you know the very long also but the tamil diction of everybody is just top class mn rajam will come only for 10 minutes as surpanaka but she cannot be forgotten even today for that particular 10 minute cameo appearance as surpanaka similarly this scene of course nagaya wonderful as dasharatha but it always stands out more for me because of kaikey's dialogue delivery munnalil kodutha irandu varangal dhan thevai sari varangalin vivarathaiyavadi sollu sollatuma sollu niraivetra thayaraga irukkire vivaram kettadum vedanai padamaatteergale edikkiyaga pesugiraaya avai sollugiren swami udanadiyaga varathin vivarathai sollu swami oru varatha ungal arumai magan ramanakku pattam katta mudivu katti irukkum adhe naalil adhe nerathil yen magan varadanakku mudi sootta vendum kaikey illa illa sollukka varathin vivarathai sonnen illa vivaram idu varadanakku pattam sootta vendum endru oru varam kaikey vilaiyaatta alladhu vedikkiya vilaiyaattum illai vedikkum illai vilaiyagave kekkiren yen magan varadan naatai aala vendum endru oru varam kaikey வரதன் முடிசூழ்வதற்கு முன்பே ராமன் ஜெமுடி மரவுரி தரித்து 14 வருடம் காட்டில் வனவாசம் செய்ய வேண்டும் என்பது இரண்டாவது வரம் என்ன ராமன் காடு போவதா ஆம் வரதன் நாடாளுவதா ஆம் உண்மையாகவா உண்மையாகத்தான் உன் நெஞ்சை துட்டு சொல் உங்கள் மீது ஆணையாக வரதன் நாடாள வேண்டும் ராமன் காடு செல்ல வேண்டும் இதுதான் இரண்டு வரங்கள் ராமா there would be countless such scenes where nagaya would get giddy and fall down thereafter but the you know he was becoming increasingly typecast as an actor 
uh, in Ambikapati with Shivaji and Bhanumati, the man who had played Bhanumati's equivalent, male equivalent, finally becomes Bhanumati's father in uh, Ambikapati where he plays the role of Kulotunga. Thereafter, any number of photographs like this. Nag Nagaya gets his Padma Shri from the government of India. When Randor Guy went to visit him to congratulate him, he said, I have only Padmam, no Shri. That was the difficulty, the difficult situation in which he was. This is a photograph taken on his 60th birthday. This is another photograph taken on his 60th birthday, once again, when, with his wife and when religious ceremonies were being performed. He began acting in a number of curry westerns in various roles, but yet there were the odd diamonds and gems that were still there. For instance, in Tenali Ramakrishnudu, with A. Nageshwara Rao playing the role of Tenali Ramakrishna, he comes as the Timarasu, the minister Timarasu. The same film made with Shivaji Ganeshan in Tamil once again as Timarasu. One lovely folk song that he sings along with Tenali Ramakrishna. That song alone is enough to establish such a great actor. But, you know, he had to act in more and more and more films in smaller and smaller and smaller roles, increasingly typecast. And there is this very famous story of Sandilian going to see him in a particular set and asking him, why? Why at this age? And he told him, Udara Nimittam Bahu Kritavesham. You know, for the sake of the stomach, several disguises have to be adorned. Nothing can be done. Nagaya finally passes away on 30th December 1973. And when he died, much of what he had, including his awards, had to be auctioned off. Some of them came into the possession of several other people. Finally, in 1977, Ituri Venkateshwara Rao, who was a journalist and who was a great admirer of Nagaya, he worked and worked to finally get a statue put up for Nagaya outside the Panagal Park to commemorate the fact that in one direction, he could, by line of sight, he could actually see the Vani Mahal, the Sabha that he had uh, created. And inaugurated by V.V. Giri, at that point of time, the Vice President of India, uh, or President of India, I think, at that point of time. Former President of India, that's what uh, it says over here. And it says, Nagaya, film artist, singer, music director, producer, scriptwriter, and freedom fighter. And then it gives his dates of birth and date of passing away. I think it's a great monument for a very monumental personality. Banumati said in a tribute that she considered it her blessing that he had acted as her father in several movies and finally he came to be a father figure for her. She also talked about how a man who had earned so much of money was finally taken advantage of by so many people who brought him to that situation of great distress. But his contribution to the art cannot be forgotten. That is really the greatness of Chitur Nagaya. I feel very honored that today I was given this opportunity to be here in this sabha created by him to talk about his life. Sometimes I think we are only instruments, you know. They want us to come, they want us to be here, they want the story to be presented and so it happens. May their good wishes and blessings be always with us. This presentation would not be over without my acknowledging all the sources that I took. Chitur Nagaya, monograph by KNT Shastri, I mentioned to you earlier. Annal Adichuvattil by A.K. Chetiar. Starlight, Starbright, the early Tamil cinema by Randor Guy. Rediscovering a Gandhi film by T.S. Subramaniam in Frontline. The archives of Tyaga Brahmagana Sabha. DC, who is here, gave me some material which I was able to use. Ramanujar Maulana, my dear friend, for the photograph that he took of the statue and Navina for help with pronunciation of some of the... Since I make so much of fun of Tamil names on Twitter, I didn't want to be held up for ridicule for mispronouncing Telugu. So I went to that extent. So thank you all. Thank you for having been here today. And I look forward to seeing you again. Bye.